flex, she wanna know me I stay low-key, all gas, no brakes Baby, let them hoes sleep Body on tip, make you grow OD I get in my way, never out of Hey, YouTube, I am back with another weekly vlog However, this time it's gonna be plants So I don't know that it'll take, like, the whole week But I do wanna dedicate at least a few days to kind of go over some plants talk through some plants and stuff like that so yeah if you're interested in plants keep on watching if you're not interested play it in the background and literally do not hurt you to keep your girl rolling but anyways let's start for real for real because y'all like they are screaming okay so today is gonna be all about like revival and survival so let me clear out this side i gotta wash a couple of dishes and then we're gonna hop in i'm going to bring some plants up on the screen talk about them and um just kind of explain like the backstory on them maybe give some history on them so honestly i might just do like b-roll and do a voiceover because some of these plants like what I just showed you is a Syngonium I have another Syngonium I don't really know like too too much about them so yeah I think I'll do it that way I'll do b-roll and I'll do a voiceover explaining the type of plant the type of care yada 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 but I need to wash a few dishes to clear out this side so that when I water them all they can drain on uh, both sides of the sink first we're going to start with our syngonium aka arrowhead plant it prefers bright to medium light warm temperatures high humidity make sure that you don't place this into bright or direct sunlight as it will burn the leaves and also you want to water when the top three to five centimeters of the soil dries out also this plant will climb if encouraged and in good conditions now we have our anthurium crystallinum this prefers bright, indirect light, and when it is unhappy, you'll see that the leaves will curl up. This likes a well-draining soil, but it likes the soil to be moist, but not heavily waterlogged. So make sure that the soil does not trap any extra moisture, otherwise the roots will rot. Now we have our philodendron gloriosum. All of our tropicals, as you'll see, love bright indirect sunlight as well as high humidity and well-draining soil. For this one, you wanna water when the top half of the soil is dry. And you wanna make sure that you take care of those velvety leaves. Now here's our syngonium that's actually climbing up. I staked it to a bamboo pole so that it can be encouraged and happy and climb all the way up. And just make sure that you get water in all areas of that so that you don't have any dry spots. Now for our Monstera Albo, it loves bright but filtered light because any direct sunlight will burn the brightest parts of the leaves. You want a well-draining soil mix and you want to let the soil dry completely between waterings. Now for our raindrop peperomia, you see the shoot and the stems are very thick because they store a lot of water in it. So you don't need to water it as frequently as you would other plants. However, it likes a fast draining soil because of that very reason. So make sure that you have breathable soil. Now for our alocasia black velvet, this likes dappled but bright and indirect light and even moisture in well-drained soil. It also loves high humidity. Our spider plant, which has become back from the dead, this was so damaged a year and a half ago, loves bright indirect light. And you wanna water it when the top one inch is dry and make sure that it's in well-draining soil and the normal household humidity is fine. Our Peperomia Hope is struggling really, really bad. Her leaves are a faded lime green when they're typically a lush dark green. This one likes medium to bright light and medium humidity. The soil likes to be moist, but also well draining. As you can see, she's already dropping leaves, so we're going to do a little bit more damage control on her later. And finally, we have our Philodendron Imperial Red. 
You want to water this when the top half of the soil is dry, again, well-draining soil. It also loves high humidity. And for those waxy leaves, just make sure you get the dust off of that so that the light can be filtered through and it can actually photosynthesize and give all the nutrients to the plant. I don't remember if I said what day it is. Today is Thursday, December 28th. Um, tomorrow's one of my brother's birthdays. But that is it for the plants today. I hope it was informative for y'all. Um, yeah, like I said before, these plants, like, they're admitted to the hospital, but they have, like, a great recovery outcome. Okay, now tomorrow... We got a couple of um, ICU patients. And by a couple, I mean one, two. Two and a possible. But tomorrow, we're going to deal with our ICU patients as well as the plants that I'm going to put inside of their own like humidity box. And it's nothing fancy. I just put them in there, sprinkle a little water on the bottom and close the box up all of my hanging plants um that are that require more moisture are going inside boxes and probably for as long as i live in colorado every winter it's just going to be a lot of plants that go inside boxes because with the heat and um like when you turn on the heat in your house it's already removing the moisture and then they don't they don't like that. So all of my plants that like before, and I'll show y'all later, that are uh, in boxes now, they were struggling. And then the moment I put them in boxes, it's a wrap. So I got another box um, from Ross the other day. And I think I might need another one. The only thing is when summertime comes and I take a lot of these plants outside into their element, took them out of the boxes, I'm like, where these boxes go um but good thing a few of them are little bins that were already somewhere else um let me turn this sound off um there were like storage bins that were already put up somewhere but a couple of these acrylic boxes i don't know i might still keep the plants inside of it but it's gonna be a long haul y'all are gonna see how many plants i have but as I put away some of the smaller tropics that require more like moisture and more care, um, I'll probably move like more of my snake plants um, into their place as far as like taking up visual space instead of, that way I can still have like plants on my ledge and stuff like that. But my snake plants, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you all the snake plants. The snake plants are, loving it okay but yeah I don't want this first day to be hella long so that's it for today I will see y'all tomorrow with more plants hey everybody happy Friday so yesterday I told y'all like we got some plants that's on their dad's the bed you know what I'm saying and they're right here in front of me and then we also got some other plants up to the side so first we're going to talk about um who's who's not surviving so this plant I'm inclined to believe so this is a philodendron Jose Buono um, it has some beautiful like marble leafing and stuff like that but when I first got it one of the leaves was like damaged and then it was just this for the longest time I've been doing this water method on my plants because I've been traveling a lot and basically <clears throat> I don't know what's going on right now hold on you put the cotton string in some water and then the roots will basically absorb whatever they need this was full so something is absorbing in here however look at this plant okay it looks like the homeland in avatar when it got burned down it's looking awful okay so we're gonna get this one done and this is a tropical plant 
um philodendrons are depending on like the shape and stuff they can sometimes easily get mistaken for uh monsteras which are your typical like big leafy plants and it has like the holes what they call fenestrations and philodendrons are known for having like more heart shaped leaves um they do have split leaf philodendrons that look like a monstera but the difference is monsteras while they can split all the way through they're mostly known for having like holes in them um whereas like split leaf philodendrons hurry up and correct see me see me see me see me see me um, they'll just split all the way through but philodendrons come in many different shapes the majority of them are heart shaped so we're going to take that out and put it in one of my homemade pots okay I drilled four holes in the bottom of this because I'm going to be using soil in this I don't have any more moss I would love to use moss because it retains moisture so much better but I don't have that um so I, I don't have pots. I do have like some, but they're like too wide and stuff like that. So I really, what you don't want to do is put plants inside of pots that's too big. Um, you definitely don't want them in anything too small because they'll get root bound. Basically the roots will just wrap around whatever it's in. But if it's too big, then the water is sitting in the soil and going everywhere else. And the roots are taking a longer time to absorb the moisture. Um, so then they'll end up dying. So I wanted to put them in something that was very narrow and then of course I can monitor the roots in this clear thing. The next one that's going inside of that, so I have two of those, is my Croton. So this is the Gold Dust Croton and I have, was bringing this back from the dead. You can see like all these little pieces and stuff on there these down here and it was coming back because this stick was bare for like a year but i also think this uh plant goes into some type of dormancy because the other one that i have over there just in the winter time it does lose a lot of stuff but the reason this one grew even a little bit and i had it outside this summer but i got here at the end of the summer so i couldn't keep it out there in its habitat but it was a stick with just roots so as long as you have healthy roots or at least like a lifeline of a root um and you just save the root system it will redevelop and then give you new plants so we have that then we have some propagation so propagations is just when you cut a piece from another plant and you make sure that it has like a, a node on it so a root node it looks like a little bump a little pimple and you can put it in moss. Some people put it in soil. I like to do mine in water because that's the most successful one that I've had. Um, some of these are dry in here. So it's a little bit of a hard time coming out. But I'm just going to put this and the ones that I can save from here, which I don't even think I can save anything because these roots are like rotted. So they're black, they're mushy. So this whole thing is trash. So let's just put this in here for now. But these roots are healthy and you can see little white tips at the end. Um, so this one's good to go. So we'll be able to put it in the cup. So I'm just putting that off to the side for now. And they were just kind of suffering because they were on the wall, these go on the wall. And it's cold as hell by my window so they just was cold again fix this fix this let's go lighten up there we go love this camera um yeah so the first thing we're gonna do is the easiest one I got me some distilled water pour enough in here for the roots and these are pretty mature I'm just not ready for these to go inside of anything yet. Um, and honestly, I think I can do like a skinnier reservoir. I'm going to do that. So I have like a couple of areas with... Do 
I want to do the skinnier one or do I want to do this one? We got this. I just wanted to have enough space, but like not be dipped down in there. Let me see. This is too skinny. I'm going to just keep it in the cup and go from there um, because once the roots get like a little bit, I need to disinfect this. Make sure you clean your stuff. Anyways, um, yeah, once the roots get like a little bit more developed, it'll, I'll probably just go from water and put it in a cup just like that but probably with some um, more moss um, or some Lekka. I do have Lekka, but I don't want to use that now. Anyways, the plants that are in this. So I have a um, Cebu Blue Pathos. And Pathos is like, if you ever want to start a plant, this is like your more like exotic. It's, it's not a snake plant, but it's fairly easy. And it's the... Cebu blue because it reflects like blue when it's its healthiest and when it's its shiniest um, underneath. I don't know if y'all could see like there's like dang it come on it's like sheen and sparkle on the underside of the leaf and oftentimes the underside of the leaf is like the prettiest part and then I have a Oh, is this the golden or the marble? I think this is, this is not a marble. I think this is a marble queen. Let me hide me. Yeah. Um, but with the marbling, um, or variegation is what it's called. Um, the more light it gets, the more variegated that it gets. If it's not getting enough light, it'll preserve the roots will preserve its energy into just keeping the plant alive which means that it'll just focus on it being green versus trying to produce all the striations and variegations so this is done um let me see if i can turn y'all right quick just turn your attention briefly okay so this corner has um, my plants that require a lot 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 more humidity so I don't know if you remember this syngonium from yesterday but the middle part stood up but all of these ones on the side did not now they're not showing me that they're left for dead, so it's gonna go inside of here. Then I have my silvery and syndapsis. Um, it's just known for its silver reflective leaves. You can see like the little spots or variegations on here. Um, it's part of the syndapsis family. They have velvety leaves. Um, just an amazing plant. I actually propagated this, and this one's doing pretty well. And this was hanging over my bed, but again, the heat is on, heat rises, and it's just drying out the plant. Then I got these plants from Walmart, and it don't really say, what is this? This is a Peperomia pixie. Um, Peperomias are mostly known for like having um, like reddish type of stems and just thick, waxy leaves. So this is going to go in there as well. I've been using this with the water reservoir but again it's just the the heat and this is another peperomia um as you can see it's like pinkish um but sometimes you have peperomias that look like little brains on these and i have some other ones that's doing pretty well but these two plants i got them from walmart that was just in i got them just i don't know for decor purposes and i was gonna let them die but i was like you know what let me try to take care of these so these are going to go in the box. So now that I did all of this explanation in one take, we're going to go ahead and get some footage of me going through these plants that require like uprooting 
and a diagnosis. I, I don't know if I'll be able to save it. Um, so we're going to see. So here I'm just opening up this little paper. It helps when you're repotting plants and keep all of your dirt and everything together so you're not making a huge mess. Now here I'm just taking it out. I'm putting that pot to the side because I am not throwing away things that I don't need to throw away. I'm going ahead and I'm cutting off all of those little things that I had tied to the pole and it's just looking really crazy for Jose Bueno. However, this top piece has some nodes on that, so I'm gonna end up trying to save that. And there was a leaf coming out of that shoot, but it ended up dying. So we're gonna put that to the side, put in a little water, and hopefully they start to take root in the next couple of weeks. Everything in this was dead, so I just moved all of that to the side, saved my string, and saved the dirt. Now here we're going in our croton, and as you see, those roots are super short compared to the amount of dirt inside of this actual reservoir so you just want to make sure that you don't have your plant in something that is entirely too big so that water is not reaching the roots this plant also goes dormant so we'll see what happens in the near future okay we're at the last part i feel like rachel ray or martha stewart um but this box has a magnetic thing and what I love about boxes is that if I have like a bunch of short ones I could go like the short route I could go like the really tall route or like the semi tall route so I like that the dimensions are different sizes because a plant like this Can be closed and I'm honestly not even worried about it growing taller it's gonna push out leaves before it pushes out any height on this I've already chopped this down twice so not worried about that so from here I just want to make sure that I freshly water these and then the water that's gonna drip out the bottom is going to be in the bottom and that is going to basically create that humidity inside of it to moisturize the plants um, and just keep everything in and in place and I will show y'all a box that I already have done um, so you can kind of see like I'll show you a plant that's not in a box and then I'll show you that same plant inside of the box. So, and then just collect all of these at the end. And what I love about the humidity box is that you literally don't have to water those plants. It takes a long time for those plants to be watered. So plants already in the winter time don't require a lot of watering, so they say. But that's only if you're able to maintain a certain level of humidity inside of your home or your apartment or you have like a designated plant room. This I watered yesterday, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, I gotta learn how to stop talking with the water running, but yeah, so when you are able to maintain the humidity, and I have a humidifier at the window, but it's just such an open space, so I just gotta do what I can with what I can. But we're gonna grab this up like a ponytail and put this in the corner cool for my plants with the velvet leaves I try not to get the leaves wet um, because it'll like I mean it's like getting your suede shoes wet you know so I try 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 to just get directly on the soil with these but sometimes they get a little dusty um, and then depending on if they're getting out of control you can go ahead and chop it up and propagate it but this one I already have a propagation going and I want this to hang down in my room 
So I'm gonna leave this hanging. I just want it to be inside of here to continue to blossom. Um, I want to put my pepperoni hope in here but that one's trailing so so bad but it needs so much humidity i'll just leave this here and i'm gonna check on this in a couple of weeks because this this synapses don't really like respond i'm just gonna cut off all the pieces that is like drooping over but honestly let me do that now okay so all the ones i'm cutting are the ones that don't look healthy anymore or don't look like the plant that i know this is supposed to look like like this one so sometimes this happens and you have to do like a major trim and i saw this plant struggling and i was just being so lazy but the other thing about the um what did i call this i hope i didn't call this the synapses by accident um about the oh my god i cannot think oh my god what is this plant oh my god i am blanking this is not a synapsis this is an arrowhead plant hold on <laughs> oh my god i'm drawing a blank what did i even call this earlier oh my goodness i don't know i am drawing a blank and i want to say i probably accidentally called it a sunseveria which a sunseveria is a snake plant so what was I talking about for the last like 30 minutes? Don't know. Couldn't tell you. But this is equivalent to a big chop, kind of. That other one had alopecia, so we, we didn't have to worry about that. Anyways, it's a little bit more team. It'll fit in here. Um, I want to chop this up but then I don't because I already have some chopped okay now I'm just talking to myself okay this is what we'll do I'm not gonna put the hope in here so we won't put the hope in here but we'll throw this in the corner and then let this trail in this space so another plant can fit in here but I'm not gonna do it boom and then I'm gonna take a cap full maybe two and just pour it in here just on the ground so that way as the heat is rising inside of my home the water will turn into vapors basic science and it'll be properly humidified so let me clean up my mess and find a home for all these new things and then i will take y'all on a tour to show you where they're gonna live for the remainder of the winter and i'm gonna show you like how a plant box can really 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 benefit your plants regardless of the season but especially in the winter okay so i had to move some things around but this is where the propagation is gonna go for now this is one of my um humidity boxes this plant i thought 
thought the corn died inside of that moss um but that just goes to show you like when you're propagating especially inside of soil or inside of moss you want everything to be like super humid in there because the roots need water constantly to take root so i'm gonna show you so this plant is a moon valley pilea and it's in the peperomia family and you kind of see it's kind of like crunchy i just missed it but it's kind of crunchy it's a couple of different colors things of that nature and before i go show y'all my other one real quick this is where i put this box so this is here and i got my baby up top but anyways think back to that plant that I just showed y'all. And we're gonna go to my successful box. The other one is successful, but I'm gonna show y'all like what happens. So we got my syndapsis over there with a lot of aerial roots. So those are the roots that can grow outside and they are strong, baby, strong. Um, Let me see. And there goes that pilea, that Moon Valley pilea. Let me see if I can pull this out. Got to pull this out without it falling. There it is. So you see how like lush it is and green and just beautiful and everything in here is just abundant and that's hard to see in there. Let me see. You see the roots coming out of the bottom. So they're just loving it. And I don't really care too much about the roots coming out at the bottom. As long as they don't get root bound where they're just wrapping around the inside of the pot. So these will be coming out of their pot soon. But right now it's not hurting them. Um, so I'll probably put a little bit more. You can see like the moss is still moist. That's still moist, so I'll just probably put like a couple of capfuls in here for the humidity. You can see, like, uh, can you really see it? I can see the condensation with my eyes inside of there, but just everything in here is just looking really, really good. And oh, yeah, we got this one over here too. This one's hard, this one's harder for y'all to see. Let me see. So same thing. You see these roots coming out the bottom. This did not look like that. Like all those aerial roots in the back. And I'll probably get like a clearer one in the morning. But you can see the sweat in the back. So these are doing really, really well. Um, this bamboo stick though. I need to. I need to take that out because that bamboo stick is starting to get like mold on it. Um, let me see if I can show y'all this. Yeah, so you see the mold on there at the bottom, but this plant right here, it got a leaf unfurling. So we'll tackle these tomorrow some of our plants that are just doing pretty decently but um again i don't want that stick to rot inside of that because then that is really gonna mess with the soil this plant is in the way let me see there it is so that is it for today for the plants um i hope you learned something um there's a lot more to go but actually breaking this down day by day just helps me not be overwhelmed and it i think it provides a chance for you to really see all the plants see how i care for plants versus just a single video of me watering all the plants and then trying to hurry up and give you a rundown of what the plants are so i'm glad some of the plants are struggling so that you can see like the realism behind taking care of plants and the fact that it's okay that some of them struggle some of them die because um that's just the life cycle of things but 
I love plants because as long as you can find something to take a root, all them leaves can die off, baby, because the rest of the leaves are going to come back 10 times better. You're going to have a much better plant than you start off with. So I'm going to finish straightening up, wiping off this counter, disinfecting some things, and I'm out of chill. So I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. Good morning. It's December 31st. So for today's plant stuff, um, this is going to require a lot of movement. So first we're going to do... Um, all of the plants that I have strings in or something where there's water sitting in a cup. Oh no, not the camera falling. So the reason I started doing these cups is because between October and like the middle of December, I was traveling a lot. So it was really like a way to get the plants watered while I was gone so that they wouldn't be completely terrible when I get back. So I put water in the cup, but I also put some inside of the pot itself. And there's like a little bit of water that came out of the bottom, but it's going to absorb. I'm accidentally like dropping water on the floor. Let's see. It is tough not having like a traditional tripod for this camera. So I guess I'll be getting that for myself soon. But it is what it is, right? Everything ain't pretty and perfect. Okay. That's, that's actually not bad. I think I might have did something with that. This is my ficus. So the one that I just watered is my other croton. That was literally my first plant. She used to be very bushy, but then we went through some things. So it is what it is. But this is my ficus. I rescued this from Lowe's. It literally was on the clearance rack. And it had just two leaves, these two. Um, so it just been through some things but since i got it it put out four new leaves we have a baby coming up this is a fairly simple plant and i know a lot of y'all probably have seen ficuses like when people buy like the big tall ones to put in there but they definitely like humidity they like light they like water um this one was in my room and i think the amount of light that it was getting really helped it out but keeping it watered um, and I kept this little string in here. Sometimes y'all will find at Lowe's or at a plant store, you'll already see the bottom watering method. I just ended up buying more cotton string, but instead of using a clip, I just put the string down inside of the plant and then put the other end of the string in the water. This one is another Anthurium. Let me bring y'all closer so you can see. So in theriums, right, you can tell like their class by their leaves. They're velvety, um, heart shaped, like a weird heart shape, but um, very velvety, right? So you can tell when they are like not getting a lot of water or when the leaves are getting old because it's curling up. And I don't know if y'all remember the other day when my anthurium was like all curled up and curled over. So we have that. Um, what do we have here? This is my, oh my God. I'm drawing a blank. This is how you know I haven't done a lot of plant content in a minute. Anglonema. Love this plant. Her soil was like wet for the longest time. So I haven't watered her in a long time. So now when I get into my bulbs for like my other spider plants, my, who is this? Is this a pothos? I think this is a pothos. But we have another ficus over here. This is the Audrey ficus. Um, she's been through some things too. She lost all her leaves at one point. And so I just kept watering the stick and now I have these, this many. 
Um, she was doing really good outside this summer when I moved and since coming inside the house. She's not really done much, but it is what it is. I might need to take it out of this pot, but we'll see. She was doing good in the summer. So she could be in like a dormant period. Again, I'm still learning and stuff like that. We have my Hoya, which I tend to keep this one pretty dry. And this doesn't have a hole at the bottom. So I'm very like light handed when I water it because I can't tell if it's sitting in damp soil without wetting it. So there's that. So let's go on this tour. Um, My birds of paradise, I think I'm gonna leave alone. But I'm gonna go ahead and water that small pot in there. My snake plants don't need to be watered. But this is like a pot within a pot. And so that allows the snake plants to still have like their dry climate that they like and not so wet soil. Um, but then I still get to water the Swiss cheese, Monstera, and my pathos. So this is my other alocasia. Alocasia is kind of like arrowheads in a way. Um... Syngonium, now the name came back to me. Let me close this. Um, but yeah, kind of arrowhead, scaly, like a dragon. They even have some like named with a dragon name. So let's see, hopefully this cup. And these ones are super easy, which is why I did it last because it does not require any work and then this is a plant that I won in a contest so this is my Monstera Thai constellation so the difference between a Thai constellation and an Albo as you can tell is like the Albo kind of gets its name because of the paleness like albino in the constellation um, on the top of the leaf as well as on the bottom just kind of looks like stars in the sky so we're gonna go ahead let me see and fill this one up with water and bigger plants take more of a long time to consume their water so theoretically you don't have to water them as much now my decursifa recitophora there may be a project with this one and i may just chop all of these empty spaces up and propagate this one I don't know. I just feel like it's too much moss. Let me check the soil because I watered this a little bit ago. But I think what's happening is this plant is trying to push out that new leaf up top. And so it's just wasting a lot of energy. So if I can reduce its stress, then I'm going to do so. But we could talk about the moss pole itself. So what happens is you have these nodes along the way because this is a climbing plant and this loves to climb. But as you can see at some point in time, it was like bushy bushy and then it just put out a stick because it was unhappy and wasn't really able to give what it's supposed to give. So then you have all these giant spaces. Then up here, we were getting a little happy because now we're putting out a leaf and then we're putting out these nodes and we're climbing. But as you can see, all of these areas in between should have had leaves come out, but they didn't. Um, but these nodes are getting ready to start to stick 
to the wall. So notice how I don't need any support for it to go up. So while I would love for it to climb as it's trying to reach its light source, I think I'm going to chop this up and literally cut all of this off and then just stick each of these in some water. Speaking of water, I haven't had any all day, so. Mm. Ciao, okay. So the last part is going to be my bulbs. So I think I already have a bulb in my spider plants up top, it's just empty. So I think I'm going to do, I don't even, let me see if I can show you. Yeah, so she has two. And she has none, but these roots, this needs to come out soon. So I'll probably have another video with plants that I need to repot because they're getting root bound oh man i got that stick i need to take out hold on okay so y'all remember the other day or yesterday where i was talking about like the spores and stuff that was on it i don't know if you can see that let me take it out Now that I got all of my stuff reorganized, it's a little bit better. Wait, did she put my shears in here? I don't think so. I got my home reorganized using TaskRabbit and I had somebody like organize everything, but I forgot to take my plant shears out of my regular like box. But anyway, look at that terrible and the last time i had a stick right inside that plant smell it smelled so bad and i was like what is going on and the stick had rotted inside so i have four little ones and five big ones i think i'm missing a little one doesn't matter at the moment so what i'm gonna do is i have my birds of paradise and then my dracaena that's over at the window i'm gonna just leave them be um and just go with the flow and if they look like they're drying then or like drooping and stuff then i'll put some water in it but honestly the birds of paradise hasn't done squat and the dracaena, I think maybe I'm overwatering it because a lot of leaves I did have to pull off because they got yellow. And that's typically a sign of um, overwatering. There, sometimes there, it is a sign of just aging, but um, it could just be overwatering. So I have my, oh man, there's another plant that has a cup. So we'll do that. So I think I want to do, I have five big bulbs six if you count the one inside of the moss i think i have two inside of the moss i only see one so i have my zz plant my alocasia that's two big ones what else is in that room i think that's it okay so my ZZ plant, my alocasia is going to get a big one. My marble pothos, this is three, that's going to get a big one. And I think my spider plant and my monstera, wait, which one is that? Is that the Peru? The one that's hanging up. Is that a monstera? Is that a philodendron? I don't, I don't know, child. Okay, so all let me squat down all of the bulbs have been used so everything is good to go couldn't really take y'all with me because there's just things and stuff all over the place 
um but these last two that i had to water oh the one in my room that has a cup method still got water in it so good to go but these are my hoyas okay now this one has been propagated chopped down all types of stuff but it's on its last leg so if you see like this white stuff on it it's because i sprayed my mealybug slash like gnat concoction so this is just a combination of neem oil dish soap water and some rubbing alcohol and it smells like ass but hoyas are prone to like gnats and bugs so i spotted one bug on here the other day and i was about to throw this whole last plant away but i was like you know what let me just treat it since this is like a plant care video and i'll talk to y'all about it this whole thing can come out as dead um and you just want to make sure you get the underside and stuff too in the summer i definitely have to do this to all my plants because you just never know and i already lost a monstera before i moved to uh, a whole mealybug infestation but yeah this is just i already watered them but this is just to let it sit and soak but they are pretty i love them and this one is variegated and we all know what variegated means now so that's pretty much it on the plant care okay that is gonna wrap up my plant care vlog i hope y'all learned something i hope you liked it um it's a part of my life um but it's just kind of hard to vlog plants with errands and stuff like that so i'm super excited that i got to make time and dedicate it to just plants daily um so that y'all can see like one of my hobbies that i came upon almost at this point three years ago so yeah if you like this video go ahead and like share comment subscribe hit that notification bell if you want to follow my plant page you can follow me at underscore black planted okay on instagram at underscore black plant it all one word and if you say it real fast it's black planet because you already know well, let me get out of here and i'll catch y'all in the next one bad little flex she wanna know me i stay low key all cast no breaks baby let them hold sleep body on to make your girl od i get in my way never